all our friends celebrating with us. So we're not gonna take more time because today what we want is to inspire you, to share with you our experiences, we also would like to know about your experiences on the music therapy world or any kind of activity on the creative and expressive arts that have changed and transformed your lives. And uh, let's start the conversation. And to do that, we are welcoming Karen Watt, professor of music therapy at the Berkeley College of Music. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much. It's such an honor and I'm so humbled to be here. It's so inspiring to be in this group of women. And I have been a music therapist for over 30 years and I have seen the scope of service change. And music therapy has become something um, that really can touch just about everybody the same way that music can touch everybody. Um, I started out in a musical family. My father played the accordion and my mom played the piano and all my brothers and relatives, we would sing around the table. So music became just uh, integrated into our life as a part of, of living. And I assume that everybody sang at the dinner table, but I'm, as I've gotten older, I realize that is not quite true. But um, I found music therapy uh, sort of through the back door. I started out in social work and performance. I'm a French horn player. I'm also a keyboard player. Um, I started out in the trumpet when I was in the fourth grade and music just became something that connected me with other people. I found that it helped build community. Some people um, when they were younger played sports, or sang in choirs or were in plays. For me, it was an orchestra and bands. And so from a very early age, I really integrated the power of music to bring people together and to make connections. And um, I'm here today to just talk to you about how music therapy can really touch so many people in so many different ways. And from, we call it the spectrum of life from uh, neonates, from even uh, as uh, babies are being born all the way to hospice and end of life. So music travels the spectrum of life. And I think the benefit of music, we know the power of music when people are sad, music can uplift. When people are happy, it can energize and relax. And I think right now with the pandemic and what's going on in the world, we see the importance of music as a way to bring comfort um, and joy when there's so much stress and sorrow. Um, and I just wanna talk a little bit about um, how music therapy um, can be used in uh, hospital settings, in schools, in nursing homes, in community centers. And I think that once you figure out um, the power of music and how individuals respond, we talk about music therapy really looking at individual preferences. So music doesn't, uh, people don't respond to music um, uh, uniformly the same way. As music therapists, we generally start out with doing some kind of assessment, whether it's a informal or formal, to really determine what kinds of music is going to um, kind of people are going to relate to, and also what are the specific needs and goals of the individuals that we're working with. And so a music therapist needs to have a wide um, kind of uh, palette of music to be able to address specific needs. What I'd like to do is start off with some music with all of you. And it's a song that I've used um, both in the classroom at Berkeley College, as well as when I've traveled to Africa with Musicians for World Harmony and Samate Mulando, um, primarily in East Africa. And we also did some work in Bogota in uh, Colombia, working in hospital settings. So it's uh, really about taking music and adapting it. And it's 
It's called I Want to Sing and Shout All Day Long. And if everybody just join me and it goes like this, I want to sing. This is my sign language. This is American sign language. Sing, 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 shout, 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 sing, shout all day long. This is the sun going up and the sun going down all day long. Friends, when my friends are by my side, I feel happy, happy deep inside. I want to sing. I want to shout all day long. And for those who know me know that this song has traveled with me everywhere. And it goes like this. I want to sing, sing, sing. I want to shout, shout, shout. I want to sing. I want to shout all day long. When my friends are by my side, I feel happy deep inside. I want to sing. I want to shout all day long. And there's so many different ways that you can do that. You can mention your friends or who makes you happy. Let's try it one more time, a little bit faster. I want to sing, sing, sing. I want to shout, shout, shout. I want to sing. I want to shout all day long. When my friends are by my side, I feel happy deep inside. I want to sing. I want to shout all day long. All right. Thank you, everybody. That's an easy song using sign language and gestures. And we know that music needs uh, movement. When you're making music with people, moving is really important. Even if it's sign language, it's body parts, it can be your whole body, um, uh, hands. But again, uh, simple songs are what helps people connect. And you can already feel energy changing when you start singing and the power of voice and music. So I just want to talk about the benefits of, of music therapy for many different people, um, depending on what their needs are. Um, if there are cancer patients who are in pain, then music can be used for relaxation, pain relief, and you learn how to use music clinically to help people with their needs. With children who have different kinds of needs, whether it's language, emotional regulation, music can create structure. It can also inspire others to learn to speak. Um, same thing, uh, I have a mother who's 101. She is playing the piano. She's going to be 102 this year. Music is what keeps her energized and connected. But we also know the power of music to work with elders, to really help people reconnect with memories and reminiscence. And it's uh, when, as people age and their memories start to go we know that it's the short-term memory that is leaving, but the long-term memory is intact. So when you sing a familiar song, it's like meeting an old friend. It's familiar, it's comfortable. So you find music that people connected with when they were in their, we say maybe um, 18 years to 25, 27 years is a, a good time when music really had, um, uh, good memories for, for people as they were, were aging. So that never leaves. That part of music uh, uh, connects people to themselves and to other people, finding music that really has those strong connections. Um, and I just wanted to make sure I'm, I'm not leaving anything out. There's so many things that I want to say and with little time. There are also challenges in being a music therapist. I think part of it is sometimes people don't fully understand what music therapy is. And as a result, um, we're misunderstood. Uh, people think we are, we go in and we play music at people, but the really the focus is really about determining 
from an assessment standpoint, what is it that people need can be groups of people. It doesn't have to be individuals. And in community music therapy, I hope Kara will talk a bit about community music therapy because that is something that is really about empowering groups and about performance and how performance is something in music therapy that has become more and more uh, used to bring people together, especially in times of sorrow. Um, and whether there's natural disasters or disasters in general, music is something that can really connect people and bring together. Um, I have been, as I said, a music therapist for over 30 years. It is so important to keep music in your own life for self-care. I just want to mention that for people who work with others. You need to find ways to take care of yourself, whether it's baking like Brooke, um, well, hopefully we'll talk about that as well, or um, playing music just uh, with other people or for yourself. Uh, Self-care is essential if you're going to be working as a music therapist um, to be able to take care of yourself first so you can take care of other, other people. Um, I, I am sort of running out of time and I'm sure there'll be questions um, that will come up, but uh, I just wanted to say I am so grateful to have found music therapy as a career path. I feel it's a gift for those who love to work with people and love music. It's a wonderful way to spend one's life. It's very purpose-driven. Um, and there's not one way to do music therapy. There's many, many different ways that one can um, provide music, again, based on the needs of the, the people that we're working with. Sometimes they're called consumers, sometimes they're called clients, and sometimes participants and just people. Those are the, are the people that we work with. We have a